Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. Some weeks ago, I built this general MIDI file player based on the Pimeroni Pirate audio board mounted on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2. And some of you asked if it's possible to create an enclosure for this. So that's what it is, and that's what I'm going to talk about today, how to do this yourself. So this video is a bit off topic, but only a bit. I also made some improvements to my Python script running this. For example, you can now play the general MIDI MIDI instruments using a MIDI keyboard. So if you think that's interesting, please join me in this video. Here we go. This video is about 3D designing and printing, and if you don't own a 3D printer, today's video sponsor PCBWay is happy to help you. PCBWay is a company that will not only develop your PCB designs, but also print your 3D designs in whatever material, color and finish you can think of. The process is straightforward. Just upload your STL file to the web page. An engineer will then check your file and give you feedback on potential problems. Once everything's green-lighted, just order the part, pay online and a couple of days later your print arrives by mail. By the way, it's a good idea to find some people to order parts together, so the shipping fee can be spread among you. For my print, I've chosen a copper finish, which I think looks very nice indeed. So thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Link is in this video's description. Let's begin by taking some measurements. We're not developing Swiss clockworks here, but you'll want the margin of error not to exceed half a millimeter, so all cables and ports can slide into place without wedging. Here, I'm measuring the width and depth of the boards, the resistance and width of the USB ports, the SD card slot and the audio jack, and also the height of the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 and its audio header. Once that's done, let's get to work in Blender. Blender is an open source 3D editor and renderer, so you don't have to pay anything for it if you don't want to. I also looked at FreeCAD, which has a much more methodical and technical approach to designing 3D objects, but it has a strange way of creating dependencies between the objects you're placing on screen, and I more than once found myself having to start from scratch because of database errors. So Blender it is. In Blender, start with a new scene. Press N on the keyboard to show the Object Properties editor. In the scene, you'll see a cube, a camera and a light source. As we're not rendering a movie here, we can delete the camera and the light. In 3D printing, we're measuring in millimeters, while Blender per default uses meters. So click the scene icon on the right hand side. It's the icon containing some primitive objects. In the units map, change the length from meters to millimeters and the scale from 1 to 0.001. In the top row, click the two circles icon and change the scale from 1 to 0.001 as well. In the top left, you can see we're in object editor mode, which is exactly what we want. Click the cube and then specify the length, width and height. We're going to add 3mm to each side, so we can create 1.5mm thick plates on each side to protect our boards. Use the mouse wheel to zoom out and push the mouse wheel while moving to change the camera angle. Let's bevel those sharp edges now. 3D printers don't like sharp edges that will put stress on your print and generally make them more unstable. In the top left corner, change from object mode to edit mode. Then click the edge icon. Now hold shift on the keyboard and click all the edges on your shape but the upper ones. Once you've selected all the edges, click the bevel icon and then move that circle to bevel the edges. Turning the mouse wheel while doing so will round off the corners. Now we've created a solid cuboid. To make this a box holding our electronics, I'll create another cuboid and subtract it from this cuboid using the boolean function. First, press Shift and A and add a new cube. Select the cube and enter its dimensions, in this case 66 times 32 times 14 millimeters. The cuboid should appear inside the other cuboid now. Adjust the Z position by moving it up one millimeter. 
You can also use the move function from the left hand menu and drag the Z axis arrow until the second cuboid just emerges from the whole body a tiny little bit. Now click the bigger cuboid to select it and press the modifiers icon on the right hand side and add a boolean modifier. Click the drop tool and then click the inner cuboid either on the main screen or in the object list. Then click that small arrow icon on top of the menu and select apply. You can now delete the inner cuboid by clicking it and pressing delete on the keyboard. And ta-da! You have created the box, congratulations! In much the same way, we can add the holes for the two USB ports to the enclosure. Add a cube that's 9 times 8 times 4 mm wide, go into edit mode, select its lower left and right edges and bevel them a bit. Then go back into object mode, click the move function and drag the cube where the hole should be. You can use the measure tool to find the right position or you can calculate the correct position on the x-axis by subtracting half of the small cuboid's width plus the distance from the right edge from half of the width of the big cuboid. In this example, the hole is 9 mm wide, so a formula is 69 divided by 2 minus 8 plus 9 divided by 2 and that's 22. Once again, apply a boolean modifier to the bigger shape and subtract the smaller cuboid from it to create an USB port shaped hole. Don't delete the smaller cuboid yet, but move it a bit to the left and repeat. By the way, you can also use the grid to roughly measure distances. In order to change to an orthogonal projection, click the cross-shaped icon in the upper right, which will display your shape two-dimensional until you move the camera again. As the grid is divided into millimeters, this will enable you to place your object with enough precision for a 3D print. We're going to recycle a stencil cuboid for the SD card slot. Select it and enter its new dimensions 11 times 8 times 2 mm and once again move it into place roughly and then enter the precise coordinates manually. Then apply the boolean function as previously seen. For the headphone jack, I used a cylinder rotated to the side by 90 degrees and another cube of the same width on top of it. And that's the finished design. Save this to disk and also export it in STL format, which is the industry standard for 3D files. Next, we need to slice that model. The standard software for this is called Cura, but as I've bought a relatively cheap printer by a company named Anycubic, I'm going to use their software here. Slicing means converting the STL file into a format your 3D printer can work with. The process is called slicing because your 3D model is converted into a number of horizontal slices that can be printed. All you have to do here is to select the correct printer model, check for the correct dimensions of your 3D model, check for the correct filament, in this case PLA, and activate supports. Supports are tiny tree-like structures that are needed to create vertical holes in your print so your printer has something to print on when reaching the upper end of a hole. Once that's done, move the resulting file to an SD card and insert that into your printer. If you haven't printed in a couple of days, it's a good idea to start by calibrating the platform. And once that's done, start printing. For this small box, my Anycubic Cobra Neo printer took roughly 20 minutes. Once the print is done, you can carefully remove the support structures. And that's it! A box to put your DIY synth into. By the way, I've brushed up my Python script a bit based on user feedback. You can now scroll through the list of MIDI files and the first entry will connect a MIDI keyboard to Fluid Synth so you can play the general MIDI sound set. I've created an image for Raspberry Pi Zero 2 that you can download from my GitHub page, so you don't have to go through the setup process yourself.
Yeah, and that's it for today. A very small general MIDI file player that also can be used as a rompler. So if you think this was a good YouTube video, please do the YouTube thing. You can also join my Patreon or become a channel member if you want to support this channel financially. As always, thanks for watching and see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.